All right, so to make an APA formatted graph, you're going to go to insert, get your line graph. You want this to be as simple as possible. In this case, I am not adding the dots. I'm keeping them just straight lines because when I make this very tiny, I don't want any like overlapping dots, things that are unclear. Best to leave it simple. So my... This is my solution to everything. In Excel, when in doubt, right click the thing you want to make a change to and then try to find an option that makes that change. So I don't want this line, so I'm going to right click and delete it. And yes, I know there's a lot of ways to get rid of that line, but just right click and see what you can do with it. If I'm going to make this small enough to fit as a quarter of a page on a Word document, see how all those numbers are squished together, that's no good. That Avoid that at all costs. So go to Format Axis, and look, there is an option to specify the interval unit. So you could do every two, every three, every five, but you can change and make space so you can actually read those numbers. Next, add Axis Labels. So what would be a good label here? Generations. Generations. Please do not write generation one, generation two, generation three, generation four. While redundancy in a scientific paper is okay, redundancy within a figure is to be avoided. Okay? If you can state something with one word, state it that way. And so let's put in our vertical, you want the rotated title, and a good title for this would be? Population numbers. Population size, population numbers, number of individuals. If you start talking about number of hairs versus links, you've kind of gone overboard because you've already said hairs and links right there. So we'll just use pop. All right, but I want my axis labels to look just like my axis numbers. Something is wrong. There's a difference between them. Can you do some fonts? No, it's bold. Bold. Well, I can check. I can go to font on my numbers, and I can see that it's whatever the body font setting is, which is Calibri now in Microsoft, and that is a sans serif font. So that's good, and it's size 10, so that fits into our guidelines. It's bolded. But this is bolded, because if you go home, it's also Calibri, it's also 10, but it's bold. So we can get rid of the bold. Okay, what next? The color. Oh, there's a box around the graph. There is a box around it, and I'm actually going to show you how to take away that box in Word. Samuel. The title. Yep, Jennifer. The colors. Colors. Okay, so two things to change. You can leave them colored or you can turn them to black and white. I'll show you how to turn them into black and white. So if you go right click. I need a format. Let's try here. Oh, look at this. Shape fill. Should I change the black? Not it's not, oh, it's not the fill. The the outline. outline. <coughs> oh. it well, you have to change the graph. I think if you go to the key, then... This only happened in this class. Hold on. Go to design. Okay, now you can do it. Yes. <laughs> and then also in shape outline, you can turn it to... Dashes. Wait, do we have to make them? Well, if you're going to turn them both black then you need to change their texture. The goal here is to make a graph that belongs in a paper that is so beloved by all that friends will make copies of it for their friends and their friends will make copies of it from their friends and you want a graph that's going to look good even Yay. after it's been copied five, ten times. That's where these guidelines came from was before there was digital documents everything was Xeroxed and so the quality of the graph would degrade over time. 
And so we still use these guidelines, assuming that things are going to be printed off in black and white, they're not always going to be viewed in color, um, and that they will be copied. And then I like to get rid of the grid lines, and so that is here. Never put in vertical grid lines in an APA graph. And then in this case, because I really just wanted to highlight the trends between the predator and how it depends on the prey increase first. So no lines is fine. If you want to talk about specific numbers, you can do that in whatever text would go with this figure. All right, and then finally a title. So when I hit title, Word or Excel puts it there. I want it where? Bottom left. Bottom. And what does the font need to be? Ten. Ten in Calibri. <laughs> and not bold. Although figure one will be italicized. I thought it had to be times new I changed I talked to the other Ivan teachers and we decided to go with Calibri, which matches the sixth edition, which is the most recent edition of APA. So we have We've updated ourselves. Who updates APA? <laughs> <laughs> I know. APA is the American Psychological Association, so they they decide when to update. <laughs> All right. It's the most common scientific form. You know this is going on like Blackboard, right? <laughs> so first sentence is going to be basically a title which I know is not a sentence at all, but at least saying sentence means you don't capitalize every word and you put a period at the end. That's what I want. What would be something... What did you title your graphs? The effect of links predation on hairs over generations. The effect of links predation on hairs over generations. Over generation. Maybe like population of hairs over generation. On we could say a population of over and we could say over twenty one generations. Now I can't read that anymore, but I can grab this and push it out of the way. Next is a description, some observation of a pattern that you can see in this graph that you might then want to talk about some inferences that you draw later on in another section of the paper, but the only thing that would belong in the part of the paper that has figures like this should be observations, things you can observe, you're not drawing any conclusions about it. So what can you just directly observe from this graph? Okay, Rian, you're making motions in the air. What can you observe from this graph? Uh, obvious trends, uh, correlation. Like what? Give me one. Yeah. State it as a sentence. State it as a sentence. Um, well, the lynx population seems to be a, um, just following the same general pattern as the hare population, just to a lesser scale. No problem. Anytime. All right, the length of population. How can we be a little more explicit there? We'll say the length of population increases. What's the hair population? As or after the hair. And then you could go on to talk about the decreases as well, but we're going to stop there. Except this is centered. How do we get it left aligned? The top thing with all the lines. The alignment <laughs> button. <laughs> the top thing. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. 
So now, what you can the like box move around the graph. this to get the spacing approximately where you want. But yes, the box is still there. Well, I'm going to copy. So I hit my Control C, go to Word. You can see the old ones from the other classes. And then paste, Control V. Now, I'm still a little, it's still a little too wide. So you might be able to move this up and out of the way. So this can be smaller. Oh, got to make this bigger. So with some tweaking, I don't like that now our left alignment is off. So now we know, do some of this in. Expand that out, which is a real bummer. But you can get this with some tweaking to where it would fit in half a page. It doesn't look crowded. Your figure title is left aligned, but ideally it would extend all the way across. You can continue to move this if you need to to give it. Yes. So if there were more than one figure on a page, you would say like figure two, figure three. So any figure in your paper is going to be sequentially numbered. So you're going to have pictures, and pictures are considered figures, and you're going to have graphs, and graphs are considered figures as well. So in a paper, in APA style, you have tables and you have figures, and that's it. Everything is numbered as one or the other. Yep. So and you would also, like, um, if you were, like, captioning a picture, you would put, like, figure one. Figure one or two, yeah. And then it would be italicized. And there are different italicizing rules for tables, which just makes it so much more fun. Um, yeah. Don't remove the box. Hmm? Remove the box. Let's remove the box. You go to format chart area, border color, no line. Yay. And there we go. It's going to look weird, because this is unlike any graph you've done before. Every other graph you've done at this point was probably to be pretty for your teacher. It's, it is unique. It's very tidy. You want it to be clear. Um, that's your goal here. One, the one thing I don't like is that since I moved some stuff around after it was already in Word, that this isn't extending to the edge of my graph. So I would go back and Excel and move the legend first, and then bring it back into Word to fix that. Um, you got to be willing to do things over and over and over, possibly until you get it the way you want it.